In my last video, I showed you step by step how to make an Utsi the Iceman style flint dagger. In this video, I'll show you how to make the woven scabbard which held his dagger. The first thing we need to do to make our scabbard is to collect the natural material. Utsi made his scabbard out of bast, which are the long, strong fibers from the bark of a tree. The tree Utsi used was the lime tree. This tree does not grow where I live, so I'm going to use cedar bark. Cedar bark has long, strong fibers and has been used for thousands of years by native people to make baskets, clothing, and other things. To process the cedar bark, I like to first soak it in water to make them soft and pliable. Then pull the fine fibers out and collect them in a bundle, which will be twisted into a two-ply cordage to make our scabbard. To make the tree bark cordage for our scabbard, we're going to use the two-ply twist method. To do this, take several of the fibers and wrap them together until they fold over and twist on themselves. You then continue to twist the two loose ends in the same direction and let them wrap around and lock into place. To make longer pieces of cordage, you progressively feed in new fibers as you twist the two ends. This will allow you to make whatever length of cordage you want. Cedar bark makes very strong cordage that will be perfect for this project. As you continue to twist your cordage, several of the fine fibers will stick out. These can easily be cleaned up using a flame. Here, I'm using a lamp made out of bear fat and a cedar bark wick. Next, you will need to twist some natural plant fibers into a finer thread, which will be used to weave the thicker bark cordage together into a mat. In the Utsi's original scabbard, this fine thread cordage was made out of grass. For this project, you'll need to twist more than 9 feet of the thicker bark cordage and 8 feet of the thinner thread. We now have all the material we need to make our scabbard and are ready to start weaving the two cordages together. Begin by cutting our thicker bark cordage into nine separate one foot long pieces. The first thing we're going to do is lay out all of our pieces of bark cordage. Um, we have the long pieces here. What we're going to do on each piece is fold it in half. And this loop on the upper part we're going to uh, secure with the thread and that's going to be the top of the scabbard where the knife goes down in and then the bottom gets tied off. We're going to weave a flat mat here and then we're going to fold it over and stitch up the side to make the scabbard um, the proper shape. So to begin making this mat once we've got all of our bark cordage folded in half we're going to take our fine thread and I have over eight feet of it so I'm going to fold it in half uh, right down the middle, so four feet is going to be right here. And then I'm going to start using this finer thread to uh, plate around the top. And what all that's plating is, is you take a piece like this and then you twist. I'm going to put this one down and we're going to keep weaving it um, until we have a flat mat. Continue to loop the top end of the bark cordage together until you have a completed weft running across the top of your scabbard. Then, when you reach the end, do a final twist and work your way back to form a second weft. Repeat this process until you have three tight wefts running along the top of your scabbard. On Utsi's original scabbard, there were seven additional wefts woven down the length of the mat. These wefts had a wider spacing and were approximately 1.4 centimeters apart. Learning this weaving technique is a great skill to have because in a survival situation it allows you to make tools out of natural material that can be used to catch food. This is the same technique you would use to make a net that could be used to catch fish or small animals. As you continue to weave, the mat really starts to take shape. Utsi's original scabbard tapered near the bottom, so as I do this last weft, I'm going to pull the string a lot tighter than I did at the top. Now that we've finished weaving our mat, we're ready to fold it over on itself to form the shape of the scabbard. Before we sew up the seam with fine thread, we need to get a strip of leather. On Utsi's original scabbard, a fine strip of leather was woven directly into the seam and likely had a loop at top which allowed him to attach his scabbard to his belt. Now we're ready to finish shaping our scabbard. Begin by taking our fine thread and wrapping it around the base to make a bundle out of all the loose ends. Then use the fine thread to stitch together the two edges of the mat and the leather to form our seam. When you reach the top, tie off the thread and cut it with a piece of flint. 
Then with the same piece of flint, trim off all the loose ends of bark cordage at the bottom of the scabbard. The final step is to tie off the end of the leather loop using several overhand knots. This leather loop was damaged sometime in the past 5,000 years and is no longer present on Utsi's scabbard. However, you can still see the ball of leather knotted around the top of the seam. And here's the completed scabbard, which fits perfectly with Utsi's flint dagger. And after doing a little experimental archaeology by putting it on my belt and testing it, I found that the scabbard holds the dagger well, but can easily be taken out with one hand. This little dagger is the perfect size cutting tool to do daily tasks that Utsi would have had to do, such as cutting meat, grass, and bark cordage. However, he lived in a violent time given the fact that he had an arrowhead in his back, and this dagger may have been something that he could use to fend off attackers. The fingers on the right hand of Utsi the Iceman's frozen body were wrapped around something, meaning that he was clinching a tool when he died. Many believe that he was holding this dagger. Utsi the Iceman lived in the late Neolithic period when they were transitioning from the Stone Age to the Copper Age. He did have a copper axe, which is one of his most well-known tools. During this time period, there was a type of dagger made out of copper that was used by warriors. Utsi did not have this style of dagger with him. However, it's likely he was familiar with this weapon as it was used during his time period. In the next video, I'll show you how to make a Copper Age dagger. I want to thank all of you who watch, share, and comment on my videos. I especially want to thank David Smith from WideOpenSpaces.com who has featured me on their website and has really allowed me to reach a larger audience. Thank you, David, for your support.